This video demonstrates how to use the process capability snapshot routine in the SPC for Excel program that uses non-normally distributed data. You begin this technique like most techniques with SPC for Excel. You enter your data into an Excel worksheet. I've done that now in column D, the variables time, and here are the results below of time. These are the results that we're going to apply the snapshot to. One thing you have to know at this point is you have to know what distribution you're dealing with, what distribution fits the data best. If you don't know that, you can go over here to our distribution fitting function and figure out which of one 14 distributions might fit your data. But to start it after you've entered the data, you go to the SPC for Excel menu, go to Process Capability, and go to Snapshot. And what we want to do is we want to use a non-normal distribution. Select that, select OK, and we get our input. What you'll see here is the variable name where it was is time. It automatically selects the data beneath that for you. And then we're going to enter the specifications. We're not going to have a lower spec or a nominal this time. We're just going to do an upper spec of eight. And then we have to pick that distribution. Well, I've already used distribution fitting to figure out gamma is the best thing that, that fits our data. And we have some options we'll look at in a minute. And then we select OK and it generates the output for the process capability snapshot for non-normal distributions. There are four charts included in the output from the snapshot for non-normal normally distributed data. The first is your process capability chart. And this has, as usual, the specifications. We just had an upper spec. Then it has the histogram of the data and then superimposed on that is a curve which is based on the gamma distribution. This gives you an idea of how well that distribution fits your data. It also has a PP plot which is a probability probability plot that takes a look at comparing the uh, cumulative distribution function for the data itself empirically against the theoretical model in this case for the gamma distribution. You want these points to fall along a straight line but you also get the Anderson Darling statistic for it and a p-value about whether or not it's significant or not. If that p-value is greater than 0 0.05, it is significant. Then we also get our control charts. We have an X chart and a moving range chart. Now with non-normally distributed data and you're using a, a individual chart, it is the non-normal individual's chart. It is not your classic individual chart. That means that these control limits are based on what type of distribution you have. So the several control limit is, is of a little above 12 is based on the gamma distribution. So it's a non-normal individual's chart. And the moving range down here is a classical moving range chart. So you want these, of course, to be in control. Then you come over here down the bottom for our statistics and you have the overall capability. It'll have the PP value and the PK value, uh, as well as PPL and P PPU. The PPL is not there because we don't have a lower one. Okay. It also gives you the results of the fit for the distribution. This is the shape and scale which, which is the best fit for the gamma distribution. And it also gives you then the control uh, limits and averages for the control chart here. So the statistics are given down here in the output. Let's take a look at some of the options that we have with the process capability snapshot for non-normally distributed data. To take a look at that, we go back, select non-normal distribution, and we bring up our input function here. Now, whenever you select this parameter, you have the option that the program will go ahead and fit the data right then, or if you've already done it and have your parameters, you can enter the parameters here. When you select enter parameter estimates, it'll bring up the ones that are valid for the distribution you picked. In this case, the shape and scale with the, with the gamma distribution. You also have some other options. Down here, you have the option to add the average or to shade the histogram or not. Now we used an individual's chart to analyze the results, but if we had subgroup data, you can decide how you want to estimate sigma, either the pooled variance, the average subgroup range, or the average subgroup standard deviation. Then you also have the option to change the number of classes or the width or where they begin on the histogram, for example. You could select the number of classes equal to 20. So these are the options that are included in the process capability snapshot for non-normally distributed data.